Hi, right, welcome back. We're going to talk about rational functions and something that they all have as an asymptote. So it's important that you understand how to graph the functions. I talked about that a little bit today after the test. But it's important to know what the shape of this looks like so that we can understand the shape of these. So I'm just going to introduce this by showing you these two shapes. So first of all, the f of x um, that we had there, that cubic, has this typical cubic function. And we should, at this point, you should know how to find the zero or at least approximate the zero because that's going to be important when we go to graph these rational functions. The rational functions will all have what's called an asymptote here. It's a line that things approach but don't cross at its endpoints. So this one has an asymptote here at negative 1, and we'll look at why that is as we go through. So it's important to see these functions and work with them as more like real ones. So again, just the definition, an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches but never crosses or touches. So we'll use that as we move along. Um, a rational function's actual definition is a polynomial um, in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. Now we, this is what we've been studying. The only thing is the denominator polynomial can't be zero. That's important because then we'd be divided by zero and we don't want to divide by zero. So again, a rational function is just a numerator function and a denominator function, both of which are polynomials, which have that form that we've been studying before that you've been factoring and looking at the first degree, second, third, fourth. We haven't really gone beyond the fourth degree, but they could. Moving along, this is the simplest rational function there is. It's 1 over x. This is what the graph looks like. You can graph it in your calculator. We need to talk about the domain and range of these functions because that's what we're going to be looking at. So if we have to look for the domain and range, we're always going to be looking, just like we have before, where does the denominator go to 0? Um, or where is it complex? But for the most part, we're going to be looking at just the real numbers, and we don't have to worry about complex numbers for a while. No more imaginaries, in other words. So if we go ahead and look here at this, we have um, a function, and we can look at the endpoints. We have um, as x goes to positive infinity, so as we go out here, f of x, the function, also goes and gets smaller, getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller getting closer and closer and closer to zero the farther out we go. Likewise, as next goes to negative infinity, this is getting larger. It's getting up here closer and closer and closer to zero. It's getting, but it's on the negative side, so that's why you say it's, it's getting larger. All right? Now, we also have two other regions we can look at. As x approaches zero from the right, we come in here from the right, f of x, the red, in this case, is getting really, really big. And likewise, when we come in this way, it's getting really, really little or smaller. It's going to negative infinity and positive infinity. So here we we're getting closer and closer to zero as we go out on these x's. As we come closer to zero, we're either going to get really, really big or really, really small. And that's how this whole function looks. So the domain of this, what would the domain of this be? The domain of this function is all real numbers not equal to zero. So x cannot equal cannot equal zero. That's the implied domain here because if you were to plug in zero, it would be one over zero. We can't have that. So the implied domain here is x can't be one over zero, or can't be zero because we don't want to divide. Moving on, um, we have what we we'll call these are the asymptotes. Those lines that, that it was approaching were the asymptotes. And the asymptotes are going to be the problem. They're going to be our challenge when we're graphing these. We're always going to have this basic function where we're going to be curving to or to and away from these asymptotes. It's the idea is to find the asymptotes so we can graph them. And if you'll take a look at page 143 on your book, it talks about exactly what a definition of a rational function is. Much of what I've just gone through. It even gives the same example of 1 over x. It talks about the domain and the range um, and how it has no intercepts. Is this an even or an odd function? Well, it's reflected across the origin, so that would be odd function. Um, and it's got a little bit of vertical symmetry and horizontal symmetry. Look at that on your book on page 143. It's really important that you understand how that looks. Well, let's define um, how you get vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Um, if x equals a, it's a vertical asymptote because that would be a vertical line where a is some number. 
and it is where um, f of x goes to infinity or negative infinity as x gets closer to a from either side, the right or the left. So it's either going to go up or down. So if we take a quick little graph here, if we just graph this line, and if this is my asthmatope right here, we usually would put these in green for our purposes. If we have an asthmatope, that would be our A value. And a graph is either going to come close to this like this. Okay, I've got to get my color. It's either going to be close to it like that, or we're going to be moving away from it. Um, and we're going to be coming down this way. So if we have a vertical asthmatope, that's what we're going to be getting. We're going to be going away from it or towards it as we approach it from one way or another. And what it does out on the other ends will depend on where we are with the graph. It could go round. It could go up. There could be another asthmatope. A lot it can do. Same thing for a vert or horizontal asthmatope, horizontal or horizontal lines. So if we have a graph with a horizontal asthmatope, if I can actually draw a good line here to make it real asthmatope, horizontal asthmatope and on our x and y axis as we're graphing this just like it says here we will have uh, the horizontal asthmatope if f goes to b as f gets close to b we're either going to go positive or negative infinity so like this as we're going away we're either going to come in and approach it like this or come in like this or we may come away from it we're just going to get infinitely close to that as we get closer and closer to this graph. Um, but we'll never cross it uh, at the endpoints. And that, at the endpoints, it's going to come in handy later. So just keep remembering that. So let's look at how we find these asthmatopes. This is a lot of words, but I think it's important to understand how these work. Um, this is all summarized on page 144. You should probably put a sticky note on page 144 in your book because you're going to need it for a while. So again, here's a rational to function. We have some coefficient in front of our leading coefficient. This would be the degree of the numerator, and this would be the degree of the denominator. So if I asked what the degree of n is, it would be little m, and the degree of the denominator would be little m. So we would be able to find um, the degrees of each, because that degrees are going to be what tells us what types of asthmatopes we have. So the graph of f will have a vertical asthmatope at all the zeros of g. So the whole reason we had the first part of this chapter was to be able to find zeros, or factors, of uh, polynomials. So anywhere there's a zero here, that'll cause the denominator to be zero. That's a vertical asthmatope. Vertical asthmatopes are the easiest to find. The horizontal asthmatopes, on the other hand, those are a little bit trickier to find. If we are looking for horizontal asthmatopes, we have to be careful because the horizontalness will depend on how the degrees are related between these n and this m. So these are the rules you have to memorize, and learn, and know. But if n is greater than m, that means the numerator, or sorry, if n is smaller than m, m is less than m, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, we have one asp a horizontal asthmatope um, at y equals 0. If n is equal to m, then we have the line an over bm, um, where n, that's these two. So whatever the leading coefficients are, that fraction gives us a horizontal line, and that line is the horizontal asthmatope if they are the same degree. Now, if m, if n is greater than m, so that n is bigger than n, so the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then we have no horizontal asthmatope. So those are the three cases. We want to make sure we understand how to do that, so let's crack this one. We'll look at this. So let's look at this function. Um, this equals this is kind of a neat one because as we look at this if I was to ask you to simplify this this whole thing that would cancel with that and I'd be left with just x plus 2 and if I'm left with just x plus 2 that's a linear equation so I can graph that and as I graph that um, it's just a horizontal line, so uh, like this, and we'll make these um, solid lines, and black, make it thick. So as I graph this, I'm going to go up to, and 
at the point, and my slope is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So this equation is something like this. As a solid line. So we take this and it's like this. And the only problem is we didn't account for this denominator here. We would need to put an open circle here at 1 because it really can't be not 1, no, negative 1. Right here is an open circle at negative 1 because at negative 1 when f of negative 1 is undefined. Because if I plug in negative 1, I have 0 divided by 0. I have 0 times 2 is a 0 divided by 0. It's undefined. So that function, didn't, negative 1 isn't in the domain. And there's a problem here. There's an asymptote here, but it, it doesn't act like an asymptote because this is a 0. We just have a hole at negative 1. So we have to remember that. Let's look at a little slightly more complicated one. If we're going to graph this, we've got to look at the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So we've got to remember, all right, where is this equal to 0? Uh, 3x equals 1. We'll stop after this example and, and move on after this. This will be a long enough video. Um, <coughs> so we're going to look here. The degree here is 1 more than the degree here. So we look here um, at our rules on page 144, which I also have right here. And we have, let's see, we have 1 here and 2 here. So the numerator is smaller than the denominator. The numerator is smaller, uh, so we have the asymptote at y equals 0. So we have y equals 0 as an asymptote. And I could graph that. y equals 0 is my asymptote. Now I just need to find where my vertical asymptotes are, and that's where 3x squared plus 1 equals 0. Um, this one doesn't have any there. If you look at that, if I was to solve that, I'm looking to see does 3x squared plus 1 equal 0. When I subtract 1, I get 3x squared equals negative 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3 x squared will never equal a real number. There's not a real number that I can square to get that. So there's um, no vertical asymptotes. And so you'd be able to graph this. And at this point, you would have to start plugging in x and y values to get an idea of what's going on. I'll let you graph that in your calculator and see how close we are. And we'll pick this up tomorrow. I just wanted you to have a good idea. We'll do some more examples tomorrow in class. Um, try this one. This has got the same. So if you look at the rules, what does it say if it's the same? We have the leading coefficients. So leading coefficients will cause 1 over 1. So the, uh, the horizontal asymptote on this one is going to be at 1. The vertical asymptote at plus or minus 1. If you solve that denominator, you're going to have 1 here and 1 here. You all can see where those come from. Uh, I'll leave it to you. Those are the asymptotes of the function. That's what the, it asks us to do. We've done that on both of these examples. We've identified the asymptotes of the graphs. There's a y equals 0 as the asymptote, and the negative 1 and positive 1, because that will equal 0 if you, if you quickly solve this. x squared minus 1 equals 0. x squared equals 1, x equals plus minus 1.